the goal of life is to live on purpose, not in reaction. of us have to make a choice. Are we living in reaction or do we live on purpose? And these words that I'm telling you now at the end of the series will become very clear. When you live on purpose that means you push forward with your idea despite the fact that you don't feel it and despite the fact that you're not being cheered on. You have an idea and a value and you see it through. Step one is general ideas of, of intelligence. As I've mentioned to you, when I use my Metro card, I'm often negligent in putting it back in my wallet. But now I have part of my logic is when I take the Metro card out and I swipe, I put it back in my wallet so that I always have it. I'm a good swiper and I am not the guy that you are stuck behind who can't find his Metro card and is not moving clearly through the turnstile. I'm a true New Yorker. I haven't moved up to the using the emergency gate level, which is, I think, the ultimate thing of like, yeah, I don't care. I'm crazy. <laughs> Woo! Going through the emergency door. And my last name might be Berkowitz, and I'm from Long Island. And I went to Michigan, but I'm crazy. I'm opening that door. I realize there are no consequences. Here, too, I want to swipe good. And for me to swipe good, to give good swipe, I need to know the magnetic side when I'm at the checkout counter at CVS or Duane Reed. And I need to have my Metro card in my wallet with me. And through mistakes, I have learned that even though I just want to put it into my pocket and I'll put it back into my wallet later, that never occurs. And then I can't find my Metro card. And I'm borderline actually begging, panhandling in an electronic manner. Like, dude, can you give me a swipe? I know that sounds really weird. Yeah, I'm, I do work for a living. I don't do this often, but help me out. Uh, I don't want to do that. So that's intellect. That has n that's not Torah. That's utilizing your brain to live a more positive life. And then there's a concept called what we inherit, Torah. This idea will be based on a book that I brought in here, an original copy from 1598 of the Maral's work on Pirkei Avot, which is the ethics of how we deal. This concept is not just intellect. This is something that comes from beyond. We as Jews have inherited a DNA of perspective of life. And that's mitzvot, which are action. And that's Torah, which is the cosmic illumination, the blueprint illumination of how we live life. And part of having that illumination is you need to be a vessel that can hold that illumination. And that happens when you have something in Hebrew which is called derech, a way, eretz, of the world. Where you have this realm what's called musr. Says the Maharal of Prague, musr is not ideas that come from the Torah. They're ideas that you figure out about how we deal in everyday life. Curb and Seinfeld is the ultimate metaphor for the unwritten rules of society that we all need to deal with. And attacking and viewing the unwritten rules of society is so important because all of us live with each other. And all of us have small difficulties with each other about how you are upholding your end of the unwritten rules of society. And if we were all on the same page societatively or in a community or with a group of friends, life would be good. So step one is the following idea. I'll show you this clip, and we'll talk. Uh, were, you, were you sitting here mm -hmm. earlier? You were. Has it ever occurred to you to use a coaster? Look, oh. I am a little bit freaked out, because I, you need to know this table has been in the Louis Dreyfus family for generations, OK? And look at it. Yeah, but I, I didn't put my, my glass down there. I held on to it. Blair. The guy came, I got an estimate, and it's going to cost 500 bucks to fix that table. The ring. I... Yes, you did. Come on, man. Yes, you did. Please don't play this game with me. I would tell you if I left it. I respect wood. I revere wood. I'm considerate of wood. What is this? Looks like a stain from coffee.
Really? Yeah. Oh. I had a ring stain from some coffee. I put some coffee there. Let me ask you a question. Did you leave a ring stain on Julia Louis Dreyfus's table? Oh, no, I would never do that. How did this get here? That's between the coffee and the wood. No. You don't respect wood. I do respect wood. This is a low grade wood. Oh, so you discriminate amongst wood? I guess you could say that. I respect all wood. I respect pine. I respect walnut. I respect oak. None of us ever learned in school that you should not put a wet, liquidy drink onto a wood table for it will leave a stain. I never learned that in any textbook. But I learned it backwards through mistakes. Now, there's a concept in life of respecting wood. Respecting wood is a metaphor for your sensitivity in the small things. Small things make great people. When you live life, life is not about big philosophy and big ideas. Life is about the everyday life. Now, you invited me to your house. You have horizontal services. You're serving beverages. There's no warning sign saying, do not leave glass on wood. But part of the sensitivity of where I put my glass is that I respect wood. I come into consciousness that this is important. I'm sensitive to the small things. Larry is falsely accused of not respecting wood. Now that hurts him because I'm someone that respects wood. I am falsely accused. And I am the last person to be falsely accused because I am sensitive to the unwritten rules of society, especially in the public eating realm. You're really going to town on that caviar. It's the best caviar they could possibly get. It's I unbelievable. Know, but what do you I think mean, I'm going to pass this I, up? I think you're going over your allotment a little bit, no? My allotment? You know, we're each entitled to take a certain amount so everybody else can have a little bit too. Um, Feels like you're going over. Just an observation, not a big deal. What you should be doing here is you take a little bit, then you step away for 20 minutes. See, see what kind of action there is. Mm. If nobody's taking any, maybe take a little bit more. Step away again, so forth and so on. All right, look, let me just scoop a little more on here, and I'm going to step away then. Wow. Enjoy the party. Okay. Always good to see you. All right. Larry, did you eat all that caviar? Huh? No. Why would you do that? I mean, everybody knows you take a little, right? Hey, it wasn't me. Then who was it? Christian Slater was eating gobfuls of it. I hate that. I, I couldn't even look at it. That's so inconsiderate, no? Unwritten rule, you take your... Unwritten you rule, exactly. Attention? So if you want to take Torah and mitzvot and make it real, you need to be sensitive to your environment and the unwritten rules. Do not hog the caviar. That is a truth. Just like Shabbat is true, just like do not steal is true, don't hog the caviar, come back, take a little bit, and don't leave a ring stain. Now, that's true, but truth is not the point as much as it is the balance of truth. How do you fit ideas that are true in the overall panorama of life? There are times when it's wrong to be right. You're right but your application of that truth is wrong, which means if you're falsely accused of leaving a ring stain, you might have to deal with that. But if you're insecure about your personal integrity, then I need you to believe that I'm not a ring stain lever. I cannot live with myself if you don't believe that I, I have integrity. And therefore, Larry's obsession with I didn't leave the ring stain causes him to lose his marriage. The entire seventh season is based on Cheryl breaking up with Larry. Larry writing the reunion show for Seinfeld only for the reason to put Cheryl in as George's wife. And of course, he's George. And this way, he'll get back with Cheryl. And it works. He finally gets back with Cheryl. But let's see what happens when he gets back with Cheryl. Oh, sorry about that. Rings, too? No, I have a bad habit yeah. of just putting my drink down on the bad table. Bad habit? But you drink down on the wood. Look, look at that stain you made. Well, I'll just sand it off or something. Do you respect wood? I guess so. Oh, my God. You had a cup like that at Julia's party. You left the ring stain on Julia's table.
She blamed me the whole time, but it was you. Well, it's no big deal. You're right. It is no big deal. Having said that, I would love for you to call Julia and tell her that you left the ring stain. I'm not calling Julia. Yeah, just tell her that, that you were the one who left the stain on the antique table. Hold the one second. I'm not going to oh, do that. Yeah, come on. I'm not doing no, that. No, I want you to talk to her. Hold I don't want to talk what? to Julia, just... Larry. Oh, Cheryl, oh, hold, hold on one second. Oh, my God. Yeah. I am not talking to Julia. I'm hey, Jules. not doing this. Uh, no, what was I show, I don't show know is why. fantastic. Why would I come here? This is I'm not talking to Wait. Julia. Huh? I said no. And you don't listen to me. Oh, well, hold, 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 hold on, okay? Cheryl, wait one second. No, no, I, th I think she left the ring stand. Hold on. Wait, what the hell are you doing? I'm leaving, Larry. Huh? Why? Why? Yeah. Oh, God. Cheryl. Cheryl. So there's truth and there's application of truth. Application of truth requires a sensitivity of balance, of how you balance everything together. Part of that, when you believe that there's something that's true and you want to follow that through, subconsciously a voice comes to stop you from that application and it comes in the way of I am excused. We live in an excuse note culture, meaning if we have an excuse then we can rationalize our shortcomings. Rationalize something that's rational, it's true, it makes sense, but ultimately its application is a lie. Larry uses the concept of a safe house, a battered wives shelter, where there is a den mother who is the psychologist of that, as a metaphor for part of our culture. Our culture, yes, mental illness is a valid excuse, granted. But then there's us in our little things where we have been strengthened to wimp out on the goals of life, to not accomplish the goals of life, and we write ourselves a note. Everyone in this room has experienced the absolute joy and magic of an excuse note that your parents write. I wasn't feeling good, Ma, can you write me a note? All right, here you go. Come in, there's a test. Everyone's wondering, sharpening the number two pencils, getting ready to fill the marks in fully. You're like, I can't take the test. I'm excused. Heaven on earth. That is the best feeling you could ever have. Magic, why didn't I think of this more often? Mental health is a very important thing. And if you have issues, and we all have issues, you should work them out. Don't just live with them, work on them. Don't just accept them, realize that that's part of your challenge. And we all face those issues. That's fine. However, in the culture of psychology, there has been a genre where we're excused from the unwritten laws of society. Let it go, this is pushing buttons, and that's all right. No, you're safe, you're safe, it's all right, let it go. Oh. Just want to get some chubby hubby. Sir, could you please give us a moment? Yeah. Oh. 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 Yes, no. A little to the left. Or the right. Separate. Separate. Excuse me. I'm trying to get to the chubby hubby. Yes, you said that. Yeah. Yes, okay, that's a good girl. Oh, oh my God. Sir, excuse me. Now, I've tried to be nice. I have asked you to give us some space. What's this about? None of your business. Personal, it's a personal thing. Would you please? Okay. All right. Thank you. Don't pay attention to that jerk. Oh, it's okay. Oh, are you all right, sweetheart? Shut up. Whatever you're going through, you could move a little to the left or a little to the right to allow somebody to get their chubby hubby. <laughs> okay, this is the dog. This is the dog that's been going on my lawn. No bag? Well... Where's your bag? 
You know, life, it gets so crazy sometimes. Oh, life I'm, gets crazy? Yeah. If you're going to have a dog, you have to have a bag. I will bring a bag. I didn't bring a bag today. I'm really because sorry Because the dog that. without the bag, it's incomplete. The it's dog? a marriage. The bag and the dog. They go together. I just don't see why you had to yell at me. I'm yelling for society, for everybody. It's not just me. Got it. People make mistakes. Every day. <laughs> Such a deep exchange. Every day? Meaning, yes, you could make a mistake once, but every day you make the same mistake, the dog and the bag, they go together. Why are you screaming? For society, because that's chaos. But now Larry is confronted with what he's done. Oh, hi. Hello. I'm your neighbor, Margaret. Actually, I'm realizing now that, that we've run into each other before. Super Margaret. Oh, yeah, that was kind of an awkward... Thing there. Just trying to get some ice cream. I understand that. I understand Chubby that. And and <laughs> well, I wanted well, to. You wouldn't, you wouldn't move over. It's odd. Well, there was a little more to it than that. Oh, but, I know um, the woman was crying. I saw yes, that. But right. Still, yeah. She could have cried a foot or two over. Well, you see, the reason she was crying is she's a a, a new member of our safe house that I'm the house mother for. I safe was, house. Yes. Some people call them battered women. I choose oh. not to use that phrase. I think oh, it's very battered. Pe pejorative. So. Uh, oh, anyway. Where's the house? It's just a couple of doors down. Seriously? Yeah. And speaking oh. of those women, a uh, couple days ago, I think there was a little incident with one of our members and her dog. She's also part of the sorority over there? Uh, well, we don't call it a sorority, but yes, she is one of our members. Oh, my God. And Sandra was so upset when she came home. And um, She was upset? Yes. A dog pooped all over my lawn three times. She right. hasn't cleaned up. She hasn't bring a bag. Well, what we would we love that. as yeah. neighbors and friends to invite you in to start a discussion. And you can talk to Karen and you can talk to Sandra and you can bring up your issues and perhaps apologize, apologize. for any discomfort you caused them. I, I would apologize. I didn't really do anything. Well, all I want to do is buy some ice cream. I know. All I want to do is have a clean lawn I understand. without poop on it. Exactly. I didn't really do anything. And you know what would be wonderful, Larry, is that so many of these women have a negative connotation as far as a male perspective goes. Uh, of course, so yes. So it would be so great to have a safe man in their midst that could uh, give them a male perspective that they could feel good about hearing. So I would be representing good men. In a safe place, yes. What do you say? I'm happy to be the, the male representative. Oh, my goodness, that's wonderful. Are you excused from the everyday realms of getting chubby hubby and having a clean lawn because you've gone through an experience? Sometimes, yes, but sometimes we fall prey to the false application of excuses. And we fall sometimes into the psycho babble, rationalized false excuses of real life. I think you might remember our friend Sandra. Pleasure. Did you have anything you wanted to say to Sandra? I do have something I'd like to say. First off, I want to um, apologize if I hurt your feelings oh. in any way uh, as a result of uh, the dog pooping. I was just going to say that um, your anger is your problem and it's not my problem anymore. So Okay, but it, it oh. really was great that Larry acknowledged your feelings and apologized. I guess, yeah. Mm. Yes, and I would... seem to be too uh, overwhelmed by it. Well, but you know what? I, I, I feel very good about mm. that interaction, and... Um, it's just that dogs don't really have control of when they go. Yeah, but the owner has control of where the dog goes. Right. You know what? You do want to apologize to my dog because you really yelled at my dog. Yeah, I, it's very hard to apologize to a dog because they're... Stupid animal. Well, you know, okay, again, yep. we're going to move on down the couch, and I think you may also remember Karen. Karen, I would just like to apologize to you as well if I made you uncomfortable in any way <gasps> at the market. It's okay. When you were oh. bawling in front of the refrigerator. I have no problem with crying in a grocery I'm store. I'm very upset. I, I mean, know, I see. I would suggest, however, that. The next time you feel overwhelmed by something, do go to a different section. 
a section that's not used as much as the ice cream, which gets a lot of action. Well, I would go maybe to the, you know, the, where, where the Japanese food is, the hoisan sauce. I don't think it's a big, it's not like buying ice cream. In each and every interaction, whether or not you spread out on the subway and take up the whole entire thing, or you sit normally in your place, these realms of everyday life make up who you are. You will only be a vessel of connection when you turn yourself onto sensitivity towards others. So even though we need Torah and mitzvot, but in many ways, the prerequisite to that is this thing called being a mensch, being sensitive, having derech eretz. And Larry has that upon himself. Now the question is, when you see people that are not random people, but they're your friends, and they are doing something that's incorrect, how do you go about explaining that to them? So stay tuned next time for stage two is how do we share with our close friends the unwritten rules of society? Thank you guys.